Bitcoin inflows continue to skyrocket as the ETFs are back in the green. Retail is buying, whales are buying. Where is Bitcoin's price headed to next? We're gonna talk about that. Also, is a Ripple lawsuit over? Is a $2 billion fine gonna be paid? And what does that mean for XRP and the token? We're gonna to take a look at that. Also, three of the top AI coins are merging. Fetch AI, Singularity Net, and Ocean Protocol are becoming one token. Who is going to be the winner? Who is the losers? And what the hell does that even mean? We have another news in regard to the altcoin market. Near Protocol had an update. We have so much to talk about. Let's get right into it. Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we're the entertainment focused cryptocurrency channel. We take old, boring, and stale information and repackage that thing up in a fun, sexy, new kind of studio way. Did you like that new studio cam? Late City Crypto. Yeah, man. You, you should see what we got going on behind the scenes. Look at this thing, man. So, uh, yeah, we're building and breaking stuff on the fly, which uh, created our little delay on our show today, but uh, we're here. Who's that random guy with the gray hair? Where, where? where? Right behind Rocky. Now. Great. Who's that random guy? Um, I do want to show. Uh, uh, there. What is that? Yeah, oh, it's that. Jimmy. What's up, oh, Jimmy? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Uh, we did get. We did mint today new coin actually. It's the uh, the Jim coin. Jim coin. Yeah, it's a one of one. So. Mm. Not sure how much it's worth, but I'm sure it's worth a lot. All right, let's jump right into it. So. Bitcoin inflows are continuing. So we have the numbers from yesterday's ETF flow. So I'm going to pull up my uh, my laptop here. Uh, so this is from Farside. So we've seen it was what? One, two, three, four, five consecutive days. Pretty much all of last week was outflows. And uh, we saw the first net positive flow yesterday. Or sorry, two days ago. Yesterday. Almost half a billion dollars flowed in to Bitcoin, despite the 212 million that flowed out of Grayscale. So BlackRock came in at 162 million. You know what's interesting here is uh, the last two days, Fidelity has outpaced BlackRock on inflows. Yesterday, Fidelity brought in 261, or sorry, two days ago, yesterday, 279, uh, which brings our net again to 418. So a lot of people were saying, Heard a lot of uh, chitter chatter on social media and on other channels. Oh, the ETF hype is is dead. That's it. That's not true. Uh, we also have this here uh, from Marty Party. Lowest Bitcoin reserves in nine years on Coinbase at around 344,800 Bitcoin remaining. And this uh, highlighting this chart here from Glassnode. Now, why, why are we highlighting Coinbase? Well, that's where the miners are selling and that's where a lot of the OTC happens, right? For a lot of the uh, Coinbase is a custodian for nine out of the 11 ETFs. And so a lot of these custodians or a lot of the ETF uh, issuers like BlackRock Fidelity, they go straight to Coinbase when they need to buy their Bitcoin to fulfill their, uh, to fulfill their ETF orders. You also have this from Bitcoin Magazine. Bitcoin sell side liquidity just reached an all time low relative to demand. Are you prepared? And so this is from. Uh, where is this from? I believe it's from Sentiment. Anyways, this chart here shows the liquidity inventory and demand from the accumulation addresses. And so we know, we talked about this with Magic yesterday. We know that uh, the options expiry is coming up at the end of the week, right? Friday is the last day. You got end of month, end of quarter, which is pretty big. Typically, it doesn't have that big of a direct impact on Bitcoin's price, but if Bitcoin can close above $72,000 by Friday, uh, a lot of these short sellers are going to have to buy back those shares uh, at a higher price than what they got in it. Uh, then we have this Bitcoin whales go on a $7 billion shopping spree uh, is a new all-time high coming soon. This is from the Bitcoinist. Uh, Bitcoin whales have purchased more than 100,000 Bitcoin over the last one week, right? So you have ETFs, you have the whales scooping it up, you have a low sell side pressure, you have low liquidity as far as how much Bitcoin is available for these people to buy from. At some point, they're gonna run out of Bitcoin. 
which means that price is going to shoot up to incentivize people that are holding on to these Bitcoin to sell them and free those up into the open market. Um, and then this chart here from Santiman as well. Uh, this shows the addresses holding between 1,000 and 10,000 Bitcoin. And I'll zoom in here. You can see in the, in the orange shaded area, we saw a massive spike to all-time highs of these wallet addresses and how much Bitcoin they're holding. So again, uh, it's like the perfect storm in terms of retail is really not even here yet, right? Retail is really not even here yet. The pension funds that, that have billions and trillions of dollars, they're not here yet. The, the governments, right? Central banks, they're not here yet. We don't know if they're going to be here, but they're not here yet. We can assume some of them are going to buy Bitcoin and hold it as a, an, a commodity asset on the balance sheet like they do gold. Um, so a lot of bullish narratives are coming for Bitcoin. Don't just look at the price. Look at what is happening under the hood. And a lot of good things are happening under the hood and in the hood as well. Um, Robin. In the hood. Yeah. Confused. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on everything I just said? Oh, man. You know, the Bitcoin flows are flowing the right direction. Uh, also, uh, you know, the whales are getting, getting crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> Round of applause, baby. <laughs> nah, I, it, it's the, you know, the miners, the reserve on the miners, obviously, uh, they're just not going to be able to keep up with the supply or the demand. Uh, the supply is just not there. You think the miners will have FOMO too? Like you, you think there'll be a point where, no, where miners are like, Hey, they're, they're not retail. So they're not a guy sitting here speculating right now. They do strategically uh, deploy their Bitcoin or they, they strategically sell it. And so, I mean, they, you have to be aware that, Hey, okay, well I have to cover operating costs. So I'm going to sell X amount of Bitcoin. So that way we stay afloat. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be forward looking as a miner and be like, Hey man, you know what? The having is around the corner. So at least in the very short term, because historically what we've seen and, and miners have to look at what has happened before, what have they already been through? And so in the previous cycles around the having, the having has come around and then the price would, would rally, but further after months after the having. So I do think that this time is different, but if you're running a business, you got to say, Hey, you know what? We need to prepare for the price of Bitcoin to stay at where it's at, perhaps drop down. And if, if that's the case, uh, we have to hold, we have to hold X amount of Bitcoin to get through right in surplus, right? Because if you're only making half the amount of money, like if you know that, Hey, let's just say you're, you're for your own personal finances. Hey, my salary is going to get cut in half come June. So let me put away a little bit of extra savings to make sure I make it to December, right? And because I'm only going to I'm only going to make half the amount of money I do per my salary for 6 months. Now, if you have that mentality, you put some aside, you know that hey, even if the price doesn't take off as it did in previous cycles, we've seen that in 2021, the having popped, you know, the having happened, but we didn't get that parabolic run up till post having months later. Same thing for 2017. So if you're running a business, you have to you have to look at it that way. Be like, hey man, we can't just assume the price of Bitcoin is going to be at 100,000 post having. Uh, you know what? Let's set some Bitcoin aside. So for that reason, the supply is already struggling. And if you have miners that are that are that are holding Bitcoin in preparation for the having. You, we're going to get a, a, a price shock, right? There's not enough Bitcoin going around. I mean, we saw uh, last week, uh, last week we saw inflows uh, totaling a, a, around, what was it tw uh, 12,000 12, Bitcoin? Wasn't that kind of the total if you took? Last week uh, was net outflow. No, I meant on the strongest day. Uh, I, I'm just singling out one day. It might, it might have been the week before, but in, in, in within the last, say, 10 days, we've had we've had several days where the inflows were massive and, and BlackRock alone was buying 12,000 uh, Bitcoin at, at one point in time. 
And with the mining of Bitcoin just being at 900 per day, I mean, you can do the math there. It's just not enough to go around. So, and then you got micro strategy buying uh, Bitcoin every few weeks now at this point. And, you know, there's obviously the ETF. They're just, just rolling. So um, the halving is only about three weeks away. And I mean, it's, it's uh, about to get interesting here. Uh, $70,000 Bitcoin might be in the rear view. Hmm. My opinion. Well, it's currently in the front view because we're not there yet. But wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Front yeah. view. See that? Yeah. Um, we do have this uh, $100 million investment in cryptocurrencies from a Chinese company, Hong Kong listed Inkverse, which is a Chinese live streaming company, announced on March 26th, so yesterday, that its board of directors had approved a budget of $100 million United States crappy dollars for the group to purchase cryptocurrencies on any regulated and licensed trading platform over the next five years company will use its existing cash reserves as a source of financing for the purchase of said cryptocurrencies. Uh, they go on to say from this, uh, from their uh, press, press release, so to say. So regarding the purchase of cryptocurrency, the company will carry out this at its discretion, depending on market conditions. As of the date of the announcement, the group has not purchased any crypto. It should be noted that any cryptocurrency the company may purchase or sell will depend on market conditions and be at the discretion of the board of directors. Uh, this is, this was such a weird story. Okay. So yesterday we shared news that a gold producing, a gold mining company, a penny stock company said that they signed a letter of intent to buy 24,800 Bitcoin. Okay. So what, what happened to the price of the stock shot up 1900% in a day. Okay. 1,000. them gems, bro. 900. <laughs> hold on. It gets better. This story has a second part to it. And then on, uh, then the CEO resigned, calling it a classic pump and dump. The stock then crashed to a cent. <laughs> what? <laughs> it went from 33 cents to a penny. <laughs> so hold on, the CEO resigned? Yeah, uh, called it a pump and dump and then resigned and then the stock crashed. He, he called... Bitcoin pump and dump? He called the whole thing, the company announcing their letter of intent to buy it. He called it a pump and dump. I got a feeling he's the one that pumped and dumped, mm. decided to say, look, I, I, he's probably planning on resigning anyways, right? Uh, he kept What getting a calls. way to go scorched earth on the way out. Right? He, he kept getting calls from Peter Schiff saying, uh, stop mining so much gold. We need the price to keep up with Bitcoin. Uh, and then he's like, look, let, I want to resign from this company. But, so I, you know. Okay. You see the power of the crypto community, right? I mean, that, that's, that's all crypto, right? Hey, we're going to rally the price, and then we're just going to tank the hell out of it. First thing that pops in my head is Elizabeth Warren's uh, presidential, or not presidential, her, her uh, re-election campaign. And it's going to be very interesting because you see the power of crypto community when they get behind a narrative, right? Hey, this gold company's adopting Bitcoin. This is hyper bullish for our space. Let's get behind this company. Stock rises. Company says, psych. <laughs> uh, it's a not, not joke. Not. And then they pull it. And then next thing you know, uh, the, the, you know, you're down to a penny. And so it's just weird. Don't you think that you're going to get the same, the same idea in the election? Just, Don't you think the power of the crypto community is going to tank? Because the money that the that, that crypto DJs have, they, I mean, I'm sure they're going to put some ad campaigns to smear Elizabeth Warren, right? I mean, think about, we see it every, every election cycle. You see all of these different, uh, like, negative uh, commercials. I feel like the crypto DJs are going to, you know, have, put some money together for some commercials. And then on top of that, they're probably going to be very outspoken, vote against it. Crypto's bipartisan. So good luck being against crypto. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be, especially in swing states. It's just really weird. Like the CEO, which I'm sure the CEO had shares of the company, right? Uh, I don't know. It's weird. Anyways, something interesting. Uh, then we have this from uh, Pete Rizzo from Kraken. Someone just moved 2,000 Bitcoin that they first mined back in 2010. They held from twenty cents to seventy thousand. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, there you go. 
Before we move forward, I would like to give a big thank you to our channel sponsor, Legacy Network. Um, Legacy Network is coming out with an app that's going to allow you to make money while bettering yourself. A uh, big one for me is time management with everything going on in my life, wife, kids, studio, other things that I can't say on the show. And so uh, we forget how important it is to make sure you manage your time. Well, with the Legacy Network app, once it launches, you can do that and also make money doing it as well. It's a win-win for everyone. If you want to learn more about the project and if you want to learn more about when the app goes live and be the, one of the first ones to download it, join their Telegram. The link is in the description of this video. Uh, Let's talk about uh, the crypto markets. Robin, go ahead. All right. Uh, so real quick, before uh, before I get into the markets, I do just want to give a little shout out to the chat. If you are new here, say hello so we can drop an Ola back at you. I got Anthony A, Mario, Lumpy Grits, Big Rad, All Set, Jimmy Bitcoin, uh, Dude Viper, and Darren Orange to all of you. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. Uh, taking a look at the crypto markets, uh, Bitcoin has officially falling off the 70k mark uh and so i know a couple of days ago uh, or on monday we were talking about uh now that bitcoin had crossed back over 70,000 uh we'd like to see it get above 71,000 for it to hold support and we never saw that and so then uh it did it did lose the 70k support and so for me personally i'm not the big chart guy but i just if if we want to stay above 70k we got it. We got to be over 71.5 is, is my kind of number or my validation. And so that has been lost. So we're down to 70 or 68,000 currently. Uh, this all, this all happened over the, since this morning. So uh, this morning we were at 70, 70 K uh, and we even went up and tested 71.5 uh, as we mentioned here and got straight rejected uh, like me in middle school. All right. So now, uh, taking a look at the broader markets on crypto, some of the uh, big gainers. Mantle has been absolutely ripping lately, up 50% on the week, also up 30% on the 24 hours. Sui as well. Uh, and then you have uh, Bitcoin Cash. Wow. Hmm. Bitcoin's down, but the cash is up. Uh, this is up 40% on the uh, the week. So very Have you ever bought any Bitcoin Cash? No. I don't believe in it. So... Singularity Net also up Fetch AI, uh, and then we are going to be discussing Singularity Net, Fetch AI, the AI projects in general. So I'm not surprised to see that these are moving. Now there is some red in the markets today. KuCoin, who is, was getting sued uh, by the SEC or by the uh, the New York uh, the New York Justice Department, uh, they are down 10% of the day. Obviously, the KuCoin token is people are or in fear of what's going on. But now if you look at the tokens that are down with the exception of KuCoin, everything is still up on the week. So this is just a, a short-term pullback. And as long as Bitcoin still holds up of 65,000, I do think that you're going to see, uh, you're going to, you're going to see uh, the altcoins rally. Right. And, and we're in kind of that altcoin season where we got to 70 K, you know, uh, as long as Bitcoin consolidates, hangs out here around the 70K mark, I expect these green numbers here on the weekly to keep increasing. Now, uh, Aptos is down 8%, Beam down 9%, Dog with Hat down 7%, and so just a little retracement there on the markets. So, there you go. Uh, when, are we, when are they going to do that sphere thing for the dog coin? I don't know. You know, I drove by it yesterday. You know, oh, dog? Yeah, Jimmy's hotel, is, uh, driving him back over there is is right next to the sphere. So. Oh, he's staying at the Circus Circus? Yes. He's actually staying inside the sphere. Oh, in the sphere. Yes. Cool. Um, so I do want to share a couple of charts here. So I got Bitcoin and I got the um, the signals and overlays indicator here from Lex Algo pulled on there. Uh, and the reason I have this on here because I want to show you guys, right? Everyone gets caught up in the intraday price action, goes up to 70K, comes back down to 66 and 68 and down to 67. Guys, uh, if you zoom out, we are still in a massive uptrend, right? One reason, well, because the price keeps making higher highs and higher lows for the most part. Also, the signals and over, uh, signals and overlays indicator here shows us that the trend is green. Well, because the candles are green. You see here when the candles are purple, that is when we are in a choppy market. There's no clear direction of where the price is going. And of course, when we're in the red, 
that is when we see a downtrend for BTC. But you can see here, these are pretty powerful indicators. You've got a pretty big, strong buy signal back here. In October of last year, and well, if that was your entry point, uh, let's just see how much money you would have made. This is always fun to do, right? Uh, at the height, you would have made 156%. So two and a half X on your money, which is not bad uh, for, what is that, four or five months? Um, and then I'm going to take these off and I'm going to throw on our price action concepts to kind of take a look at, hey, where are we at for support resistance? Where can we maybe catch some bids? This premium zone has tethered down just a little bit. You can see here we got rejected twice, so three times. Three consecutive days we tried but failed. And that number is 71,200. So what you want to see is you want to see a break above that, maybe consolidate a little bit. Or if we know anything about crypto and Bitcoin, this thing could absolutely just moonshot through it and then try to catch something on the way down, which at that point, we're in essentially uncharted territory, right? Once we get past the $74,000, call it, call it 74, 73.6 to be exact. Um, and so no one really knows where Bitcoin is going to stop. The best thing you can do is pull your fibs once you get to levels where you don't really have any support underneath, if we see that massive explosive rally with no really cool off periods, right? Which you do want to see cool off periods. But as far as the daily, Bitcoin is not oversold, not overbought. So good market conditions here. Volume has been trending down a little bit, uh, but price is trending up. So that is something to keep an eye on. Uh, since Bitcoin got to around 61.4, this was back on Friday, March 22nd, uh, Bitcoin has rallied, even where it's at right now, rallied almost 10%, almost 10% in a matter of four or five days. And so, guys, remember, zoom out, stop panicking, right? We're in this for the long haul, right? So everyone calm down. Also, we want to share a XRP chart here. Um, Looking bullish on XRP. Not really, uh, but not really looking bearish either. So this is just a ch choppy market. I mean, you zoom out to the weekly, right? It's just bloop, 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 right? We hit the high, we come back down, we chop. We come back down to the low, we catch we catch at 49.50 cents. We go up, we get rejected at 74 cents, right? This has happened numerous times. To be exact, three times since July of last year. We had July of last year, and then we wicked up here again on November of 2023. And then more recently, where we had that massive liquidity grab, which was on Monday, March 11th, uh, which pushed the price down. And we're kind of trending sideways here. We are at... So at what what level was the bloop, bloop, bloop at? I'm just curious. When, when did that... <laughs> it was specifically at this level. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's when the fish tanked, right? Went down in the tank. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Carlos wants to know, how was the Phantom Long doing? We exited that position uh, in the red, so uh, it actually got invalidated. Once oh, we the, lost money? We lost money. Damn it. Once the handle, uh, once the hand, here, I'll just kind of show you. I'll kind of show you where we exited the Phantom trade then, and why, uh, why we believe they got it. Uh, go. I was going to uh, say, while you pull that up, uh, I encourage you, the viewer, yes, you, holding your cell phone or sitting in front of your laptop in our studio, hit the like button. If you have not hit the like button, shame on you. That's all. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this phantom chart here. So this purple line is, is where we exited for a loss because we entered right around here at around $1.13, $1.12. Uh, once it had about $1.09, $9.5, that is where we exited. Uh, because one, for me personally, uh, from my experience, anytime the handle dips below the halfway point of the cup, it's an invalidated pattern. Now, could it have reversed? Sure. But you can see here, it continued to spill off. Actually, uh, it continued to spill off around 10%. And so you can't win every trade. And so that is something we exited. But I'm looking to enter. I, I'm still bullish long-term on Phantom. Again, if you zoom out on the daily, uh, Phantom is actually creating a nice little bull flag right now, right? A uh, nice little bull flag. Unless we, we keep going down, if we keep dropping on Phantom, uh, the level I'd be looking at, there's really no gaps down here until we get to about this equilibrium zone, which is right around 78 cents. Strong support area, as you can see here. Uh, when we dipped down originally, this was back on March 10th, we saw a rally. We saw a wick below, wick into, massive run up. We tried to wick down here again, caught support right around 78.2 cents. If we happen to spill off here again, um, I am a buyer at 78.8 cents in Phantom. I will enter a long trade, but we'll keep you up to date on our trades. Uh, just make sure you follow us on Twitter. 
Uh, all right, that'll do it for the markets. I do want to pull this up though, real quick. Uh, earlier, we had asked split desk. Okay, split I'm sorry. Second what a decision. dumbass question. Hold on. What kind of? Si- <laughs> I know you you ask with your dumb questions. All right, so my questions are at least split second provoking. decision. Oh my god, do I want real estate which I can't access liquidity to from money, or do I want ten Bitcoin worth seven hundred thousand dollars? I don't know. Well, that's okay. So you think it's dumb, right? Mm. But uh, here in the comment, we had Crypto Corey. Uh, he said, House of Miami, 10, uh, 10 BTC at Cycle Peak will be under 2 million, a decent. Anyways, he goes down here to say, looking at houses for sale right now, a decent house seems to start around 1.3 million for 3,000 square feet. I can make more money renting that house than owning Bitcoin. And so you might think it's stupid, but I'd like to remind you, even people named Crypto Corey, of crypto in the name still would rather hold real estate not a real crypto guy i'm just saying that this is this is. is the ideology shared by a lot of people and well, these so, are people that don't understand the power of bitcoin his name he's got crypto in his name that doesn't mean he's a crypto guy pretty sure it does uh no it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm a uh, big rob does that mean you're big no because you're literally not big oh, but it's in your geez. name isn't it? actually huge bro can you guys guess what this guy's internet name is in his house, his Wi-Fi name? Nah. We'll let you take a guess at the end of the show. I'll reveal what it is. <laughs> what do you think? Guess Rob's <laughs> Wi-Fi name at his house. Whoever's right, I'll send you 50 bucks in Bitcoin. Oh, gee. That, yeah. You, whatever is right. Uh, except Jimmy can't because I think he's been there before. <laughs> Jimmy, nah. you're excluded. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about some uh, regulatory stuff. So um, we're going to talk about the Ripple lawsuit here in a second. But first... I want to share this from the House Committee on Agriculture. Uh, The lack of clarity in the digital asset space is alarming. Our letter to the SEC with the Financial Committee highlights concerns regarding Prometheum's ETH custody announcement and its implications for market integrity. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but they're pretty much saying, you guys suck. What the hell are you doing, Gary? We also have this. thought this was super cool from Coinbase. So this is uh, coffee that they're dishing out. But look at this, Robin. Nutrition facts. You see these? Americans who want to update the system, 87%. American adults who own crypto, 20%. Even breaks it down into political, right, sectors. Jobs crypto is set to create by 20. So it's got, this is pretty cool, man. I think this is great. Start handing these out, right? Get the message out there. This is a branding. This is uh, education. This is knowledge, information. And then we have this from Paul Graywell, the chief legal uh, analyst or legal officer at, at uh Coinbase. Today, the court decided that our SEC case will move forward on most of the claims, but dismissed the claims against the Coinbase wallet. We were prepared for this, and we look forward to uncovering more about the SEC's internal views and discussions on the crypto regulations, to which Brian Armstrong reposted and said, great progress on the SEC case and huge win for self-custodial wallets. This ensures the on-chain ecosystem will continue to innovate and create economic freedom around the world. We'll continue fighting for your right to use crypto and to get clarity around the rules until the job is done. Um, Any thoughts here? Well, thank you to Coinbase for, one, taking on the SEC because the easier route, I don't want to say it's the better route, but the, the simpler, easier Let's just not deal with it is to settle, right? Oh, did. Yeah. And so we've seen it over and over again. Hey, we don't want to go to court. We're just going to settle. We don't, we don't want to deal with it. And so we hats off to you, Brian Armstrong. Hats off to you, Coinbase. On, I, don't, I don't know if it's like a big win. I know it's just it's one, of, one, one, of the, one of the many charges. But, I mean, it, it does show you that the it does show you that the judges aren't a hundred percent on the side of the SEC, right? That you know there is there is a, a hope for crypto, and well, the SEC's also got a lot of losses as well recently. So there you go. Gary's taking a lot of L's. Uh, also, uh, speaking of the SEC and lawsuits, uh, Ripple seems like uh, their case is coming to an end. So SEC seeks almost two billion dollars in fines in the final judgment against Ripple, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission has asked a New York judge to impose a nearly $2 billion fine against Ripple Labs 
The SEC's proposal asks the court to order Ripple Labs to pay $876 million in disgorgement, $198 million in prejudgment interest, and $876 million civil penalty amounting to the aforementioned $2 billion. The SEC filing said the defendant, which is Ripple, their response shall be filed no later than April 22nd, the day of the having. Is this a coincidence? Okay, all jokes aside. Um, so case is not really over, over, but it's pretty much over. It's got to figure out the money, right? It's like David won the poker tournament. It's over, but we got to figure out how much money he's going to get, right? So <clears throat> David won the poker tournament. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, I uh, came away with more winnings in the last poker tournament than you did. That's not true at all. That is absolutely unequivocally false. Were you on the final table? I was. I left with $1,300. Huh. Yeah. What'd you do with that money anyways? Don't worry about it. Anyways. You bought some NFTs? No. You probably did. Yeah. You beat me. Yeah. We know what you did. <laughs> anyways, can we... What's the question? Okay. $2 billion. A it. lot of people are worrying. Mm. One, we know Ripple holds a lot, a shitload of XRP tokens. People are worrying, hey, they're going to have to sell them to pay the fine. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not too sure, man. I, you know, I, I've lost track of what's going on in this, in this XRP court case. And, you know, one week it's, hey, the end is near. It's supposed to be at the end of the, at the, end of the month. That was years ago. And so for me, I'm not even entirely sure when this thing is going to, uh, when it's going to be over. I mean, wh what's your thoughts here? I mean, you think so it's April twenty second, the, the date, right? But it's it's they just got to figure out the money. So, my my big thing is how are they going to come up with that money? They're probably going to have to sell some XRP tokens. No. What do you mean no? You think they got Ripple, Ripple's been around for a while. Remember, Ripple wasn't even a yeah, wasn't and even a, they weren't even a crypto company. Before, you know, I mean, they were a company that was not involved in crypto before, before they, they had. But a lot of the money XRP. and their value is in their XRP hold. I don't know the exact I mean, numbers, you, but. I mean, you, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it is. You think they got $2 billion laying around? They in might. Cash? They might. You're high. They might. I don't know. It's something to keep an eye on. This is not something that I, you know, if you're an XRP holder. Uh, oh, here's the problem. They're not going to lose this court case. I'm sorry. So if they, if they do, then yeah, they got to come up with a lot of money. And will, will we see a settlement at the very end? I don't think so. And so I think it's either going to be $2 billion or. It's not going to be nothing. I guarantee you. Well, why, why not? Because they didn't win the court case. They lost the part where they sold XRP as a, a, a security contract to institutions, right? So, the, but that wasn't that. So the the XRP token, the big win here is the token itself. Yes, I know a it was security. a security. Yeah, that was the. But how it sold could potentially be a security contract. But that's what I'm saying. But that hasn't been ruled on, right? They haven't been found guilty of that just yet, right? And so that's that's the whole thing. And so, right? I don't know. If you start talking about paying fines, someone lost, right? I'm not, I ain't no damn lawyer here, and I'm not a judge, but they're always trying to issue fines. And so, I mean, okay, the they they issue fines all the time. And then the thing is, is like you can just say, hey, I'm not going to pay the fines, right? And yeah. so. We'll find out more on the 22nd or before yeah. the 22nd because that is when Ripple gets to essentially respond to what the SEC wants. I don't think, you know, can we see a scenario where they're like, Fuck, it's been so damn long, just take take the money, be done and over with. I don't know. $2 billion on that? That's a lot of money. Well, Binance got to come up with five. That's a lot of money too. Um, all right, I want to talk about this. So, what, Sam, they, what are they doing with all that money? What do you think? Uh, well... <laughs> they ain't buying Bitcoin. They ain't putting in Social Security. That's, uh, we don't know what they're doing exactly. Ask an SBF. Um, with Sam Bankman Freed's sentencing is 24 hours away. So by tomorrow's show day, mm. we'll know how long Sam Bankman Freed will be in the John for. Is that what they call it? The John? Um, the bathroom. Oh. Well, there's bathrooms in jail. You're in the John all the time. There's you bathrooms know. in jail too. What happened to my freaking. <laughs> oh. All right, let's talk about this, man. I don't know what to make of this. Um, so pay attention as I go through this article, okay? 
three decentralized platforms to merge AI tokens and create an AI this is big news, man. alliance. Okay. I was all over this this morning. So Fetch AI, Singularity Net, and Ocean Protocol agreed to merge tokens and create an alliance for decentralized AI. Uh, FET, which is the native token of Fetch AI, will become the ASI token with a, proc with a supply of around $2.63 billion and starting at a price of $2.82. Now, what happens to Singularity Net and Ocean's tokens? Well, those tokens will merge into ASI, both at conversion rates of around 0.433 to 1. So if you have 100 Singularity Net tokens, you'll get 43.3 ASI tokens. Same thing with Ocean Protocol. ASI will have a fully diluted market cap of around $7.5 billion. Math does not add up here. I'm just saying they're printing money. They're like, okay, so they're printing money because if they merged all three and they had the same value as the token, as the token, as if they had the same value, they would be 33%, right? 33.3% should be what you would get, right? Well, that is if they have the same market cap. I understand that. But, but what I'm saying is that if you're going to, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the, the mathematics on it. I'm just saying that it, from face value, from, from the outside looking in, because I was looking into this morning, I was like, these guys are about to crush it. They're about to make a lot of money, right? What are you looking for? I'm just pulling up their market cap values of Fetch. So Fetch is at 2.5 billion. Singularity is at 1.6, right? And then Ocean is definitely lower than that. We'll see where Ocean is real quick. Um, but it's it just, I don't like great. Like my, I don't have any Ajax and I don't have any uh, Ocean Protocol, but I do have a lot of Fetch. And so is this good for me? I don't know. Is it right? They're saying the price is going to be, what was the price they, they named there? $2 and 82 cents. And you're currently sitting out for fetch AI, you're sitting at three bucks or is there an arbitrage opportunity there? Probably. Right. So ocean 740 million singularity net 1.6 billion and fetch is 2.5 billion. So these three coins will become ASI artificial super intelligence agency. Sounds like a, uh, Superhero agency from the Marvels. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Superhero. Um, very, very interesting. Like, I don't know. You know, I, I, I dug into this, into this proposal because that's essentially still what it is, right? It's a proposal or an announcement that they're, they're going to do this. But They agreed. It's... So it's official, official. Huh? It's a, well, it hasn't happened, but they've all agreed. But, but isn't it going to a governance vote? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not official yet. So, it, it sounds like there's no turning back at this point, but I don't know, man. I, I feel like they're, gonna, they're going to... Kind of where I'm at. I, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it, man. Would you be happy if, if Solana, Avalanche, and Cardano merged? No. The one? No. And so, for me, I, and I know that... I know that these guys... Because there's gonna be a new token, and just off of off of face value here, you they get you, you get a conversion rate of over eighty six percent of the token. Eighty six percent is converted over from the two two chains. That that dismisses the third, right? You're at forty. What was at forty three percent? You said so. You get a point four three conversion per token for two different chains out of the three. And so I don't know, mathematically it just doesn't make much sense to me. I, I'm just saying they're, they're, they're printing money, man. I'm telling you they're printing money. You know what, what happens with fetch? So if I have, let's say a thousand fetch tokens, right? I think it converts one to one because the price is pretty close, right? So fetch, look, it says, if anything, says, you'll get more tokens, right? Well, here's the thing. The, the starting price is two eighty. So if you buy it now at $3, it convert one to one. You actually lose 18 cents. Mm. And so it's not a you're 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 right now you're not incentivized to buy fetch. But I bet you what time was fetch's price this morning? It was over three dollars. Prior to the news? Yeah. 
I thought I thought it was it was up today, wasn't it? Yeah. So this was three twenty seven at six in the morning. It was at three dollars. Where, where was it yesterday? I don't, I don't care where it was this morning. Where was it yesterday's price? Under three bucks. Three dollars and ninety cents. That's what I'm saying. They 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 announced the news of it. They they announced its token price at the time of the market price, right? What about the price of Ocean? Take a look at the chart here, real quick. But you get what I'm saying? They 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 were like, hey, they're gonna do a one to one conversion. What's the price of Fetch right now? This is the price it's gonna. This is the price that it's gonna launch at. So that way, there isn't a massive arbitrage opportunity. So this, this, so of course the article came out today, but, um, that's what I'm saying. And so prior to the article coming out, they set the price, they, they set the market price. They announced the market the price at whatever the market was. So here you go. Tuesday, the 26th at 5 PM. It was at $2.81. Yep. There you go. So they decided to keep the, do a one for one trade. And then on top of that, you got to assume that, that the final price will be exactly where he fetches at that exact time. You think so? Yeah. Is, it, is that the, art, the article just said it was going to be a 280, right? Starting price of 282. But I mean, if we, I mean, the point you make is, hey, that's the exact price of where fetch was yesterday. So if you use that same logic, that when that's it actually what does I'm, happen. That's what I'm saying is that the arbitrage is going to keep it at 280, right? Because if it, let's just say it gets to three dollars, you're gonna like you know what? Let me sell it now, so that way when we convert over, I'm not losing twenty cents on every three dollars. And so because people are forward thinking and looking at the markets, it's gonna keep the price down, right? And that's probably why the price of it shot up and then it tanked this morning, right? Or a little bit. Or pulled yeah, back down. Yeah. From let's 6 a.m. It's down from, uh, let's see, from 6 a.m. So 6 a.m. to where it's at now is down 10%. Yeah. And so I, I think that people realize they're like, hey, uh, you know, people realize like, hey, look, the, the price is is down significantly. Or the price will be down significantly from where I, where I, where I hold right now at $2.80. You know, I'm getting a lot of questions about should I buy Singularity Net? Should I buy Ocean Protocol? I don't know yet. Yeah, I don't. I would, and, and I tried to. I, I'm telling you, I was because I was you, digging into the this morning. Just do the math real quick, right? So, so it's going to come out at 7.5 billion valuation. Ocean is at 700, so that's a 10x. But you're getting, you're getting less than two, you're getting one to two. Right, so for every one, for every one, you're getting half. If my if my brain is correct, your brain is not correct. <laughs> my brain is correct, then yeah, you kind of should should be buying Ocean Protocol. I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you, this is this is very interesting. It's very. I didn't have too much time to dig into this. Right, uh, it just dropped this morning. But I this is something that as soon as the show is done, this is something that I'm going to be looking into. And uh, how this thing works. But, I mean, think about it. If your Ocean Protocol is at 700 million market cap and the token that you're going to get, if you have 1,000 Ocean, right, you'll get, fi you'll get 430 of the new one. But the valuation is going to be 10 times higher than where Ocean is right now. I don't think, there's not going to be a, an arbitrage opportunity that big, right? They, they, they just won't, they wouldn't allow it, right? Because uh, here's the thing, Ocean Protocol is at a dollar thirty, and so at a dollar thirty, if you get basically forty three percent of a token, I mean that would put the value that would put the price at fifty six cents per token, and uh, you know for every fifty six cents you would get a full uh, what what is the ASI ASI right. So basically, hey, for every fifty six cents I I buy or I put into Ocean Protocol, I receive back one two dollar and eighty cent token, and so that's a five x on arbitrage opportunity. They they wouldn't allow it. So I, I I don't know. I I wouldn't I would not FOMO into any of these projects right now. I would kind of try to figure out 
more details and it wasn't from a lack of trying i'm telling you i was over here trying to figure out how this it, thing works like me personally i don't know if i haven't paying close attention to some of the smaller ones but i i i haven't seen this at least from top I'm, projects i've never seen any merger and and this is so to me this is very unique and i don't want to just give random uneducated information to people watching and you know see people get wrecked but just just off the top of my head the the math it's like if the price is set at 282 and the conversion rate is set at 4.433 ocean is like buying ocean protocol is like a no brainer that's just yeah, there's, but there's no about. way. There's like, I mean, there's just That's zero right, chance right. that if there's a a, a a a for sure conversion that you're gonna get a five x arbitrage. I mean, just arbitrage that's is a, usually that's pennies. A arbit that's a massive arbitrage. Yeah, big. yeah. Arbitrage usually. So, I mean, the most successful arbitrage, the way that Sam Bankman Freed uh, made Premium? his money, is this was off of like point zero one percent arbitrage opportunity. And so to sit here and think you're going to get a 500% arbitrage opportunity for every token, not going to happen. Is it? It, it just, it will not happen. It, 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 it won't. It would tank the tokenomics, the ocean protocol, the price would skyrocket. Uh, it should, the if, that, if, that, if that was true, you should see about a $7 ocean protocol, which is, would rally the, the market cap. It just, the market would, doesn't, doesn't equate that way. It just doesn't work. So I'll just leave it at that. Where's ocean right now? Ocean's out of Ocean's dollar. spilling off. Yeah. Ocean's actually spilled off. Yeah, it's 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 pretty complicated. I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. I will look into this more deeply and, and I'll and I'll bring you a, a, a different synopsis. But look at the volume. The volume just spiked too. But it's just but in its entirety, this is very interesting. First of all, I I can't remember any any crypto mergers. Have have you? I mean, no. I mean, you had but Polygon Robin, Matic, look, Robin, but that, look, that one was... Look at the volume. The volume's been non-existent. And then, just bam. All right. Anyways, go ahead. What were you saying? I was just saying that I, I don't, I've never heard of any mergers. Me neither. Right? At, least I mean, from, at least from, like, top 100 projects. Could we have seen some in, like, the, uh, the 6, 7, 800 project range? Sure. But that's something that we don't follow. But from a, from three of the top AI projects in the space right now, and the hottest one, which is Fetch AI, very, very, I don't want to say weird, but it's just. So the last one, okay, so the last one you had Polygon Matic. So I know a lot of people just throw the two words together, but there was a merge for that. And so. But it wasn't three completely different. Th That's what I'm saying. But, but you know. I don't remember the details of the Polygon Matic. So they're merging but. all the ecosystem tokens into POL. Okay, that's a merge. Sure. I'm talking Disney, Universal. No, I, I know this is unprecedented know. having three. But what I'm saying is that even, even the Polygon Matic merge, that was a long time ago. And that was completely different. So I'm just very curious. I, I know maybe something goes wrong here. Maybe maybe the merge doesn't, doesn't, isn't successful maybe there's some kind of i don't know man i mean i if it's a conversion you know like usually you, the tokens will upgrade to a, a v2 and so it's pretty much just a redemption here here's my tokens give me the new ones back right. so there's usually they're 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 i wouldn't expect that they're merging any of the blockchain i think the other blockchains will just simply cease to exist all the liquidity will get pulled because everyone will be redeeming their tokens for the new one as the price drops. So you'll just be incentivized. You won't have validators validating. Yeah. And so, you know, the other two chains, all, all three chains will die and, and the one will, will persist. Um, but I don't know. Just very interesting, man. This is something you, you should absolutely keep an eye on for sure. And we will, we will. Uh, moving on to something that's not merging is near protocol. Uh, near foundation unveils new multi-chain feature for its users. Uh, Near Foundation has revealed a significant advancement in the introduction of chain signatures. This new feature will allow users on the platform to assess access multiple chains using their one account, enhancing interoperability across multiple chains in the blockchain ecosystem. These cryptographic signatures will allow users on the platform to sign transactions on a blockchain 
using a private key connected to another account on another blockchain. This way, it is easier to facilitate swift interaction across multiple blockchain networks. One of the few benefits of the update, of the update is that it will open up a new way for developers to create products in the decentralized finance sector that will leverage assets from different chains without the need for complex bridging mechanisms. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, interoperability is a big word here. Uh, it's a lot. It's a word a lot of projects throw out there, but few do any actually do anything of value and of note to to bridge that gap between the chains, right? Um, what are your thoughts? Is this the chain link killer? This is not the chain link killer. Chain link is completely different. We're not getting into this argument <laughs> again, please. Just talk about near, okay? Um. No, I like Near, man. They, they uh, Near, Near is very multifaceted, right? They, you know, as Nier is dope, dude. They, they, I mean, outside of maybe gaming, I, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some gaming on Near. I think outside of that, they pretty much got everything else checked, right? They got AI, they got DeFi, they got uh, cross chain compatibility. Uh, they have smart contracts, they have the scale, but like, like you, you list it outside. I mean, they even have some nft there but outside of gaming i think near pretty much checks every single box right don't don't you kind of agree yeah and so and and the retail is behind it man retail is behind it we've seen some massive surges and that's not venture capital that's not institution that's just straight up dapps are being built on it people are using it Total value locked is is soaring, and the the transactions are through the roof. Their the roadmap is 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 getting checked off, one by one. It's I'm, I mean I you it's got a Solana vibe to it when it comes to user interface UI and UX. Right, I was playing around with it the other day, and you go on there. It's so easy to create your near account. Um, like I think it was two clicks and you have it. And imagine being able to do whatever you want from that one account and sign sign your private key across multiple blockchains and multiple platforms, multiple dApps, and bring it all back to your one near account. Mm-hmm. Pretty dang exciting. Uh, all right. That's all we got for today. Um, sorry about being late today, guys. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we've been revamping the studio as you saw from our studio cam. We now have a separate production room, so a lot of exciting things are happening here at Sin City Crypto. Uh, so, but tomorrow, uh, we're coming back, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have, uh, if you're a SHIB fan, you're going to want to watch today's video, as Robin had to change her heart on SHIB when he once clowned on the project for I creating I love L2 SHIB and, and you. And now, now, it's one of his favorite projects. You're going to have to watch the video to find out why. Hmm. By the way, did anyone guess correctly your Wi-Fi name? Uh, I did not see it. No, no. Sorry, no one wins money, but I'll tell you what it is. I did. Well, you know, you don't count. No. Big Rob, big internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, Big Rob, one foot long. Big Rob, big internet. That's right. Big Rob, big internet. You know, I got a two two gig internet. Oh, so, that's what it's referring to. So Six. you got, oh. you know... Big Rob, of course, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then also uh, the fastest internet that uh, Las Vegas provides. Wow, a gig. <sighs> it's correlated, bro. Wow, <laughs> it's correlated. Wow, thanks. For that. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I want to give. Uh, today is Jimmy's last day here with us in studio. So Jimmy, again, we wanted to thank Here's you so much. Uh, he's been with us the last two days. Me, Rob, Jimmy, we've just been putting this damn thing together. It's taken hours painting. It's taken. Mm, uh, yeah. A lot of uh, you need to get a right uh, <laughs> that ladder that Jimmy was on that ladder. What like uh, an hour ago? <laughs> need another Ethernet port back here. Stop it! It was stretching right in. And no, the ladder. We don't need. <laughs> no, we're done. Rocco, all done. Yeah. Okay. Ready. Oh.
Anytime Robin sits and thinks, uh, someone's got to start doing some work or spending some money. So we try to limit that as soon as possible. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We love you. Make sure to watch our shit video later today. Come back tomorrow. See you next time. Peace. Sin City, crypto. Everybody know we here for entertainment and info. Gonna show you how to get that big dough. So every day stay tapped in for big facts, no cap in. With Bitcoin, if you're in, then you win. We divide the pie with no fraction. It's Big Rob, David. I split the game, but they gave it. Name the coin that's your favorite. I got dry powder, why save it? To the OGs, new beginners. Special shout out to the well members. Buy a dip, sell winners. Ain't really nothing you can tell sinners. Tune in for the latest new flavors. They gonna teach us mean coins. They polarizing like barbecue chicken pizzas. I laugh with a major grin. Lag as we trade them in. Baddies, they came to sin. And sinners gon' play to win. Screaming, Ola, till my bags are full. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to, to French to Toaster. To signed up for Sin City Ola. membership. Don't also, gift. Did one all set did the same thing he signed up for uh since he took the membership and also gifted one as well and then uh shout out to carlos on the super chats and hendy uh he said he's been paying for this toddler membership for almost two years and so big shout out to you there hendy uh probably the one of our original og members when we were sub 500 subscribers thanks good day